So what are the top five most interesting AI companies around today? Let's talk about them. So welcome back to AI Insight to Innovation, your one place to find out how to make AI work for your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, and analyst with the Cube Research. Let's get started. Well, this kind of came from a, a bunch of questions I got uh, about, you know, where the market is and also newcomers, new companies, upstarts, uh, innovative technology, things that I see kind of uh, different from the vast ocean of, of AI startups we have out there, everything from uh, the AI micro clouds, GPUs as a service, uh, all the dot AI companies that are starting to emerge. Just a huge amount of private capital is going into this marketplace, as well as the existing public players, Microsoft, Google, AWS, uh, OpenAI, all these other large behemoth companies, NVIDIA, uh, that are making uh, strides in the market and taking advantage of the uh, uh, rise of AI and the, the hype that's being around this technology today, which I think is is interesting unto itself. So we're, we're going to explore a list of what I think are the most innovative and impactful companies that are kind of at the forefront of this market. So I did a few things when I picked this list, number one, I only went with five. I guess I could probably easily do 10 and 20 and 30 companies that are innovative in the space, but just wanted to look at five of the ones that are out there. And I had a criteria for picking the five that I did. Uh, number one, and most importantly, unique and innovative. In other words, they're doing something in the market that others aren't necessarily doing, and so they're creating a space within the market. And normally it's not just building tools to build LLMs. It's building uh, innovative technology that work on the periphery of, uh, of AI development, your ability to look at, uh, you know, do ethical audits, your ability to uh, look at the accuracy of your knowledge models, the ability to improve your knowledge models incrementally, those sorts of things, which I think are a lot more helpful than just the major companies out there that are putting forth the tools and technology to build a generative AI system or any AI system for that matter. Uh, that, that technology has been around for years. We've just seen it refine itself and move in the whole generative AI direction. But there's not a lot new there if you look at how AI systems are built and how they're deployed. The models we're using, which are generative AI models, which really in popularity is probably a couple, three years old, is new. Um, but it's also driving a gold rush, so to speak, in the amount of money that's flowing into that technology space. And that's why we're seeing some of these, uh, you know, companies that are starting to merge as being very uniquely uh, innovative in the space. We're going to talk about them. Also, they're informally well-reviewed. So in other words, I haven't just heard about the formal reviews, um, analyst ratings, things like that. Uh, with the big analyst firms, but actually people who are using this technology have given me the feedback that they find it valuable, which I think is very important. Uh, we certainly have a lot of formality out there in the number of reviews, uh, and you know I'm no stranger in doing those reviews, working for analyst companies and magazines, things like that over my 30-plus you know, year career. However, just kind of getting the input from the rank and file out there, people that are using this technology successfully and have hands-on experience with it and can tell you that it does what it does and it's impressive to them. So informally reviewed by people I know in my network. Um, the other thing, they can generate business value quickly. So it's not this thing where we're going to create this strategic technology that may or may not uh, generate business value for your enterprise, but it's something that can generate value and bring it back into the enterprise in a fairly short period of time, six months to a year. Uh, so it's not this big, huge honking AI strategy and AI strategic technology that may or may not have a business benefit or not. Um, you know, for example, building large language models for some of the businesses versus some of the more tactical use cases out there, things like that. It's going to be able to return value back to the business that can be measured. And then fourth, they're privately held. So I'm not interested in um, looking at publicly traded companies. Obviously, if it's privately held, they're normally going to be uh, younger companies, uh, equity funded, things like that. I do get people who ping me a lot looking for um, publicly traded stocks to buy. I never have anything to say there, but uh, it's interesting 
that these are small companies, they're private equity based, uh, and you know, the normal suspects, people down on Sand Hill Roads that are investing in them. And I think that kind of makes them interesting. Uh, and so they're not investment opportunities for most of the rank and file. Certainly if you're, uh, uh, you're in the private equity space, sure. Uh, but for most people, you can't buy, uh, pub- you can't buy stock in these companies on the public markets. So let's get going. So first on the list, it's Cohere, uh, C-O-H-E-I-E-R-E. Uh, and they specialize in natural language processing and LP tools. And their main offering includes APIs that allow businesses to integrate advanced language models into their systems easily without heavy technical overheads. So Cohere provides products like their language model customization, enabling technology to build chatbots and perform data analysis while maintaining strong data privacy protocols. So this is one of those tools that is not necessarily the complete solution. It's part of a solution. And they're able to provide some NLP tools that are going to be very helpful to developers out there. Uh, the feedback I got uh, from folks who are using this, it's very easy to use. Uh, it is able to pay for itself in a, in a very short period of time. And they consider it a must-have uh, for people who are building uh, AI systems using chatbots, NLP tools, things like that which is pretty much most of them. Everybody's putting natural language processing on their AI systems, even though they have API access is one of the areas, but people want to talk to their uh, generative AI systems and their AI systems, and that's how you do it. So the next on the list is one that you hear a lot about, and uh, and I'm adding it to the list, and that's Hugging Face. Uh, they're renowned in AI community for their open source trends. Transformer library, which is used in various NLP applications, again, natural language processing, and they make tools like Model Hub where developers can access and share pre-trained models and data sets. Uh, their platform encourages collaboration and innovation in the space, and so in other words, they allow a community to participate in building these various systems. And Developers that I know, people who are building AI systems and some of the AI architects in the space, including myself, uh, hear a lot of good things about using this technology and the ability for it to become a force multiplier in the marketplace for folks that are building and deploying AI systems. So Hugging Face, certainly, uh, it's a well-known name out there. It's one I think most of you have already heard of, but it's on my list just for those reasons. So then we have Runway which is pushing the boundaries in the creative industry with generative AI tools. They offer software for video video editing and content creation, like their Runway ML platform. And this tool helps artists and creators generate visual effects and graphics more efficiently, allowing more dynamic and creative output. So this is kind of another uh, derivation of the whole AI market. This gets into the creative, this gets into the artistic, obviously supporting things like marketing, you know, personalization of experiences, you know, all these things are there for the business benefits. But it's just really cool that we have so much going on in the marketplace where we can get into these image generation, video generation, audio generation uh, areas where we're able to create this content in a dynamic and valuable way and not just creating things that are annoying people. I think sometimes there's too much AI out there. You go to YouTube and you know, half the videos out there have AI uh, voice uh, generators that people are running, but the ability to back value, bis- in this case, business value into the creative effort and build it into your applications. And again, for the businesses, low hanging fruit would be logistics, would uh, the ability to create training videos, your ability to do personalization of various systems out there. And that's the potential here with uh, products like Runway. Adept AI. And these guys are moving toward enhancing human productivity through automation. And they're working on systems that can handle complex, multi-step tasks across various software applications. And their product focuses on using AI to navigate, uh, manage digital tasks, streamlining workflows, allowing users to focus more on creative and strategic initiatives. So if you're thinking about RPA, you're thinking about uh, leveraging a personal AI assistant to assist you in doing things like making this video, for example. this is the kind of technology that's starting to emerge. Obviously, uh, RPA has been around, robotic process automation has been around for a long period of time, and we've been dealing with automation using AI, uh, systemic to lots of different productivity tasks for probably the last 20 years, but now with the whole generative AI focus, 
getting into net new technologies like Adept AI um, that are becoming very good at automating tasks that we're normally used to doing manually. And you think about it, we're about to hit the world where we're going to have an AI assistant that's going to on our iPhones. Uh, and certainly people are integrating chat GPT, uh, generative AI tasks, chat GPT tasks, things like that into their daily lives and automating things that were once not automated, responding to emails, uh, the ability to uh, auto post on your social media, all these sorts of things are available to uh, now to you. And well, this is really kind of another tool in your arsenal and people who use this tool I direct from their mouths, they find it very uh, innovative and very productive to use. So Adept AI. So finally, uh, Grok AI, G-R-O-K, I'm always afraid about mispronouncing these things. AI is making waves in explainable AI. And so they are developing tools and frameworks that aim, at, aim to clarify how AI systems reach their decisions. And so in other words, this is kind of a cool angle of it because if you, you think about it, we're, we're, we're getting answers from these AI systems and in some cases pretty uh Pretty important answers, the ability to improve a loan, your ability to diagnose someone uh, with a disease based on imaging, things like that. And this is tools and technologies. And we're starting to see a lot more of these things. We we're able to peer into how those decisions were made. So you can audit the explainability of the technology so we can show our work and figure out how these decisions are coming up out of these AI models. So we're not just getting the answers out of them and following, the, following them blindly, but we have the ability to kind of walk through the decision-making process and understand how these decisions were made. And it's important because I think going forward, people aren't going to accept the fact that these AI systems are always going to be making the right decisions. And in many instances, they're not. Uh, so your ability to have explainability, your ability to audit these systems using tools like this, I think is going to be something that's got to be in, in terms of the framework. Uh, as far as when I build AI systems, the explainability of those systems, the ability to track decisions through them uh, in terms of testing, in terms of auditing, in terms of compliance, all those sorts of things are going to be very important. And your ability to have tools like uh, like Grok, I, I think, is absolutely important as well. So they provide uh, products and tools that are geared toward industries that require transparency and accountability. Uh, the Ensure AI possess uh, possesses uh uh, processes, excuse me, can be understood and trusted by users and stakeholders. So again, it's the trusted framework, the ability to see inside these knowledge models and your ability to determine how these decisions were being made and making sure they're making the right decisions based on the right information that humans agree with. I think that's going to be an important aspect of AI. So anyway, these companies, I think, are really just kind of the start of the revolution that's going on right now. You know, here we are in 2024. You know, generative AI is a couple of years old. You know, we've seen a number of companies enter the market. Normally it takes, you know, a couple of years for companies to get up and running. We have billions and billions of dollars of venture capital money that's in this market as well. And new startups are appearing on my radar screen all the time. And probably to a point where I just can't pay attention to all of them. But some of them are starting to emerge and making a difference. And I think that's going to be an important part of this marketplace. So kudos to these uh, folks who made this list. Uh, looking forward to see great things from you. Uh, you know, don't prove me wrong. And uh, we'll keep coming back here every once in a while to, you know, talk about other companies that are innovative in the space and even perhaps even having some of the uh, people from the companies to explain their technologies firsthand. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out our work at The Keep Research. Also, check out the uh, content from my uh, other compadres and uh, in terms of podcasts and videos and articles, things like that, lots of great stuff out there. Lots of great analysis is coming from this organization. Also, don't forget to drop me a line and comment below if you'd like to see any particular topics covered. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers. Cheers.